Hello everyone, I am Dr. Natalie Condella, a hypnotherapist and a transformation coach. And on this channel, I talk about hypnosis, transformation, and spiritual awakening. And so today, I want to talk to you about something that was requested by one of my listeners. Um, so I really appreciate your suggestions. And um, the suggestion was to talk about premature death. Um, and what it means, you know, in a spiritual sense. So when I was thinking about it, I thought that I'm going to talk about it in two parts. And so the, my second part will be about premature death. But in this first part, I want to talk about death. What does that mean? How do we look at it? So when we think about death, when you think about death, what is your response. What's the feeling that you get in your body? How do you react to it? Do you tense up? Do you just want to kind of close your ears and say, la, 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 I don't want to hear about it? Um, do you get really sad? Um, do you get angry? Do you get fearful? What is the response that you have just to the word death? In our society and in many societies around the world, the word death brings up mostly negative, if not all negative um, feelings and emotions. But this video is going to be different because I'm hoping that I can help you reframe that, shift that perspective, if that is the response that you got, um, and look at it slightly differently. Now, this is just an invitation for you to listen, take this information in and think about it and then see if it resonates with you and if it makes kind of um, logical sense or some sort of sense um, and if it feels right for you. And if it doesn't, please feel free to disregard it. I offer it for those of you who are ready to hear it. So we often, or we usually, I should say, think of birth as a very happy event. Um, and we think of death as a very sad event. Um, as such, we celebrate birth. We celebrate it every year. Um, and we mourn death and we feel obligated and sort of morally feel it's the right thing to do to stay in sadness when we um, experience a death you know in our life it's not that sometimes we feel obligated we really do feel sadness of course but there's also a sense that there has to be a certain period of sadness that we maintain it there, you know, are sort of unwritten rules about if you lose someone, um, how long you should experience that sadness. Maybe not, not so much nowadays, but, you know, in um, history, there, there have been kind of rules about how long someone had to stay in mourning when they lost um, a husband, a wife, a family member, how long they had to wear dark, sad clothing, um, how long they have to stay alone. So there were specific rules about maintaining that sadness, maintaining that display of loss and tragedy. But what if we are mistaken about the interpretation of that event? So the way um, I would invite you to think about death is what if death is just a return home from let's say a work day so when we um, when we go to work and one of our co-workers leaves for the day and goes home we don't hold a funeral for them we don't um, feel extreme sadness because we know they have just gone home. Everybody does that. We will see them again at a later point. 
Now, you may say that it's a ridiculous comparison, but what if we expand our vision and look at life differently? What if we look at it not from a human perspective, but from a soul perspective? Now, of course, that will require that you allow for the, for the possibility that we are in fact souls, that we are spirit in a human body. And so if we are spirit, then let's make another assumption. Spirit is eternal. It just is. It just is. There is no beginning, no end. Spirit is. And so if it is, and it comes into a human form to have a life, then at some point it will have to leave it, just like we leave work at the end of the day. And then since it's eternal, it may not wish to work just one day, it may wish to work multiple days. So then it will go in, it will leave, go home. It will go in into the body, it will leave and go home. So in that sense, the, the entry and the exit are not events of either extreme joy and extreme sadness and tragedy. But perhaps they are just joyful moments because in one event, you're entering the space where you come into play and work and experience things. And that's your birthday. You're birthing into the earth. And then the next time when you open that door and you leave, it's a joyful opportunity of you birthing back into your home and returning back into your normal state in your natural form and returning back to your soul family. So actually both days are joyful, but we don't see them as such. We see them as one coming into something and another is leaving that because we are so focused in a three-dimensional reality that we don't really acknowledge anything else as having the same um, reality to it as, as having the same substance to it. Now, even though religions tell us that there is life after death, um, they make it more as, or at least I'll speak about Christianity, it makes it more about um, some sort of a reward or some sort of a gift that you have to earn that takes you away into some sort of um, magical place um, and you stay there forever because you have earned it or perhaps you go to a very sad and bad place and you get punished forever because you really didn't earn um, your place in heaven. But in either case, that will be the end anyway, because even if you go to heaven, that will be the end of your existence on earth. You know, a different way to look at it is that there is nothing you have to earn. It's just your home. It's just where you belong. So it's like going to work and then coming home, going to work and coming home. You don't have to earn the right to return home. You just return home. And so that exit and entrance, exit and entrance that the soul experiences is just natural part of its existence. Now we feel sad when we experience loss, when somebody leaves. And that sadness is mostly because we lost something. Now we think that we feel sadness also for the person who is gone because they lost something, because they lost opportunity to live. They lost all the things they could have experienced, especially when we talk about premature death. You know, that will be, you know, one of the main things that people are so sad about and feel that it's so tragic. And mostly we're sad that 
death is the end, so the person who lost that opportunity to live, they just will never regain it back. Not even that it's early or late or, you know, whether they lived a good life or they didn't get a chance to live a long life, that something was taken away from them and they have it no more. Even those of us that believe in some sort of life after death or some sort of reward of heaven after death, still mourn that loss, still mourn that potential for experiencing life on earth. So we think, we believe that the person who is gone lost something that was very important to them and they lost it without and you say in it of course because who would choose to die right so they it was just taken away there we say their life was cut short like somebody just came in with a sword and just sliced them away from earth and it's horrible and it's tragic and they say they have no say in it um, and it's a loss for everyone. We, we use that word, it's a loss for us. It's a tragic loss and it's obviously a loss for the person who died. But now if the soul is eternal, then what happens to it? What happens to it if it can't actually die? Like it can't actually lose its life. Now, the physical body can die, that is for sure. Our bodies, our vessels that carry us, they die. But the soul can't. It just is. It just is. It can be in the body or it can be without a body, but it, it just is. So then what happens to it? Well, what happens to it is that it actually doesn't die, it doesn't disappear. In fact, when we are born on earth, we kind of squeeze ourselves into a limited three-dimensional, or let's say four-dimensional with time being a dimension, four-dimensional existence. So if you remember the genie in a bottle from Aladdin, if you remember, he said, genies are powerful, powerful beings living in a teeny tiny little space. That's kind of a description of a soul living a human life. We are powerful, powerful beings and we squeeze ourselves into our little bodies. And so in fact, when we are born on earth, which we consider, you know, the, the crown of um, joy and achievement and happiness for a human being. In fact, what we do is we are diminishing ourselves to the point that we can exist in a three-dimensional physical body. But in fact, when we die, which on a human level we consider tragic, for a soul, it's like a genie coming out of a bottle and becoming fully powerful being again because it no longer has to squeeze itself into a three-dimensional human body it can kind of stand you know powerful and strong and stand tall and just be everything that it is and so while we experience a loss because we no long because we see that the body is no longer animated, the body is no longer able to move and do things, the soul is in fact very much alive. In fact, it is more alive than it ever was while it was animating the body. Because it finally shed that thing that was limiting it. So to a soul, it is just as happy, just as happy an occasion when it dies and goes home 
it is just as happy an occasion than it is for us when we see a child born into this world. But of course, human beings don't often see it this way. And so the reason we, we don't see it this way is because we are not able to communicate the same way with the soul when it's not when it's out of the body than when it was in the body. So we perceive it as a loss. We perceive it as the end. We perceive it as, well, that's it. There's no more of that person. And that's sad. But in fact, when the spirit comes out of the body, it becomes more alive and becomes more aware. It, it, it knows things. It can see things for what they really are. It is still there. It didn't disappear because it can't. It, the soul just is. And when I say soul and spirit, let me just explain it for a second. Spirit is just the energy that animates everything in existence. Spirit is. Spirit is what we call God. And soul is that part of spirit that becomes our individual experience. So you can think of spirit as everything and soul as that part of the spirit that becomes kind of our journey. And our soul stays with us through every human experience. So a soul is a small part of the, the, the spirit of all that is. So soul is eternal, spirit is eternal. And when the body no longer contains the soul, the soul still exists. It's just while we are in our bodies, we cannot easily perceive it. Now, some people do. You know, there are mediums that can communicate with souls that have departed. Um, you may have had maybe a dream or an experience where something happened and you feel like it was a message, a communication with, from a loved one. But of course, you probably dismiss it or you doubt it and you th or you think it's just a coincidence, which it might be, but it might be very meaningful coincidence. But we typically definitely have a much more limited communication with our loved ones. Now, the reason for that is that when spirit comes out of the physical dimension, the physical body, it communicates in different ways. It, it's no longer linear um, for a time is all in the now. It's not, you know, in a, in a line. Um, it doesn't necessarily communicate in, um, linear sentences. It communicates more in thought groups, um, in feelings and emotions. So a, a more normal way for a spirit to communicate with you, for a soul to communicate with you, maybe um, to kind of send you a memory of an experience that reminds you of the feeling that you had in that moment with that person. So you may um, just sit and all of a sudden a memory floods you and you become emotional. And that's the soul telling you, remember this, this is how I feel about you. So instead of so hearing a voice that says, I love you, you will get that flood of a memory, a flood of an emotion, just kind of a download of a thought, um, that's not linear, but just all like in one moment, you'll just, mm, I know, I know what this says, or I, I know you will know like the whole story about something in like one, one millisecond. You will just know how maybe the person felt about you. You will know, um, you will understand something that you didn't understand before. It's just, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's like, um, a download of the whole story in like one like this and then if you were to tell it to someone you might actually struggle putting it into words because it feels like you have to unwrap that whole package of understanding that you got and put it into linear sentences and it's almost hard to do that's how the spirit communicates so if you ever have that experience and you doubt it Think about 
how your loved one might feel when they are trying to send a message to you and trying to tell you how much they're present and trying to tell you how much they love you and every message they send you dismiss so what i would suggest is you can you can be discerning you should be discerning you know um not perhaps every single thing that happens in life is a sign of some kind However, allow, um, allow for signs to come to you, allow for things, for synchronicities to occur and allow for the possibility that they carry meaning. Um, because if you dismiss everything, you might be discouraging, you might be um, sad and warning someone that you have lost and at the same time dismissing every message that they send you that may make you feel better and that may communicate to you that they are still there. So talking about them being still there, every soul that leaves um, through that exit door and returns back home, every soul that still has a family member, uh, someone that they were emotionally connected with, someone who's important to them, still in a physical body, still on earth, they will stay with them until that person leaves, meaning goes home, meaning dies. So if you lost a partner, if you lost a child, if you lost a parent, if you lost a sibling, a friend, that where you were somewhat, you know, emotionally connected with, um, they are still here with you. They just won't leave. A part of them will always stay with you until you leave. They will always look, watch over you. They will send you um, guidance. They will have support ready for you. And if you're open to developing communication with them, they will gladly communicate with you because they are not the ones who are limited in communication. You are. We in our human physical bodies are the ones that are limited. We are the ones who can see. We are the ones who can't hear. They are fully alive. They can fully hear fully see, fully communicate, but we are limited in our perceptions. So in a kind of very twisted way, they are the live ones and we are, if we were to use this language, partially dead because we're partially limited in our experience. They are by no means dead. They are very much alive they are just alive in their true natural form which is spirit and it's not physical so when we look at death it really is time for us to begin to shed that morbidity that sadness that we surround that transition with Yes, when somebody that we love leaves and we are not able to stay in touch with them the way we used to, yes, there is absolutely natural sadness. Even if you have a friend that moves to another city or another country and you no longer can uh, maybe communicate as often as you did before, you would be sad. But you wouldn't necessarily for many years carry that sadness with you. It may be a sad experience that we go through, but it is not something that should end our joy as we know it. It's, it's not something that should stop us from living. And you know, one of the things that um, I hear sometimes is people saying, I heard it in an interview once, um, there was a, a man that lost his um, first wife and he's now married um, the second time and he's happily married he's you know very happily married 
and um, he was asked about his first wife and her death and he said well you know you never lose that grief you that just it just never goes away and it struck me because i thought is this something that we are kind of morally expected to say or is it something that he truly feels because if you're always living in grief then um you know what what kind of life are you going to live and or is it something that we're kind of socially expected to say well if you lose someone you really can't possibly walk away from that um, loss and i really don't feel that that is true i have experienced loss in my own life and i will probably talk about it in the second um, video that i do about premature death because that's what i experienced and um i don't believe that never letting go of grief is reflective of reality because there really is no death there is, you know, the, the, the being that was here with us, yes, we can't see their body anymore. That's what we lost. We lost the physical body. But the essence, the memories, the experiences, the love that was there, the care that was there, all of that is very much alive, very much, even more than before. So the only way we can explain that, um, eternal grief is if all we think of a human being is that they are just their body because yes the body is gone true the body you can no longer hug it you can no longer touch it you can no longer see it so if you think that the person you loved was just that physical meat and bones and i'm sorry if it's kind of pretty crass, a crass way to say it. But if you think that the person is just that physical body, then yes, the body is gone. But if you think of a body is a clothing that a person um, wears and at the end of the day takes off and then the next day they might wear another um, set of clothes. If you think of if you think of a body in that way if you don't give it too much significance if you think that the body is a vessel that holds the soul and so when the body is done with can no longer support the soul the soul just walks away and continues its life outside of it then in fact you can perhaps mourn the body, you can mourn the fact that you can't quite put your hands around that person anymore, but you can't mourn forever that the person, that the soul of that person, the essence of that person is no more because it is, it, it exists, it cannot die. It's just that's impossible because spirit is. Spirit was, spirit is, spirit will be forever and ever. Amen. So I hope this gave you a little bit of a different perspective on death, on how you may view it, on what it actually means, um, and on just some questions that you may pose to yourself and kind of think about them all over and um, perhaps shift your view on how to approach death and how to view it. That time in life often is sad because we, um, we feel the loss. We do. There, there is a loss. Um, I'm not saying that there isn't. But the loss is more for us. The loss is not about the person who lost life. Um, 
we are the ones who are feeling the loss. They, again, they are um, perfectly fine. Um, but I think it is time for us to begin to view death as a return home that deserves perhaps a party. Um, just perhaps a happy send off because uh, from what I understand, the soul family will have a party for them when they return home because they welcome them home. So it might be a good idea for us to begin to let go of that idea of tragedy that is associated with death and begin to associate joy, release, freedom, um, and just becoming who you truly are, associating that with our exit. So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you have any thoughts about this topic or want to share your personal stories, please feel free to do so. I would love to hear from you and hear um, any other topics that you'd like me to address. I will record a second part of this video and it will address premature deaths. Um, I will be posting it within a few weeks. If you like the content of this video, please subscribe to my channel, click on the bell so you can be notified of my future postings. I really appreciate you being here with me today. Thank you. Bye.